Morning, everybody. How you doing? Exciting morning for us here. As you can see, we are in the clouds, uh, sitting at about 1,300 meters. We do get lots of mornings that basically is just this kind of cloudy weather. Um, but the good news, uh, the rainy season, I think, has started, which means the growing season has now really kicked in. Even though we did have uh, plenty of warmth, we did have not much moisture. Uh, but the last uh, couple of days we had about 30 mil, which is awesome. And forecast is looking for another 30 mil uh, on Wednesday. So today is Monday, the 6th of October. So this is exciting, which also means it's time to manage this baby here, which as you can see, it's pretty much overgrown. But I'll just run you through more or less what I'm thinking to do. So as you've been following our progress here, uh, the system has really pumped, especially the part that we had the, the veggies in the middle here. Uh, this is really now super tall. It's about two meters tall for most of it. Uh, and we're really going to have to to drop it all. So now it's going to be the, the biggest management we've done. We're going to manage every single plant. Uh, probably even some of the productive plants, we might just have to trim them out. So just to give you a bit of an idea, all of that... Uh, Mexican sunflower we're gonna be dropping pretty much at ground level maybe 10 centimeters or so just to encourage it to to come back up it grows up really really quick castor oils you're gonna be pretty much just leaving a leaf removing all of the flowers over there uh, eucalyptus we're probably gonna be lifting some of these skirts especially some some of those bigger plants and lifting the skirt means just kind of coming in and those lower branches that you can see there uh, pretty much up to that ideally we only manage up to that kind of brown section there but i'll probably push it a little bit higher maybe you know a couple of nodes up just to create a bit of conditions for something like the fig here that is really starting to to come back up also with the pigeon pea what i'm thinking to do is you can see there that there is probably four or five or six together maybe leave just one or two. So do a bit of thinning on the pigeon pea, as well as remove the leaves, oh, not the leaves, sorry, removes the flower. Um, what else? Oh, the crotillaria, the brick crotillaria here that has been doing such good work. Well, first, of, first and foremost, remove all of those seeds. Now it's time to definitely harvest them uh, and reduce them into size as well, probably maybe half a meter. Uh, and definitely not as as kind of laggy as it is everywhere so that's it it's gonna be a massive massive pruning we're gonna want to expose all of our productive plants as well uh, and really bring that organic matter down so yeah it's gonna take a few days for sure it's a slow process it's a careful process it's a conscious process uh, not so we really don't wanna um, yeah damage or remove or prune any of the plants that are not ready for but there you can see some of the eucalyptus there is about three meters tall look at those uh, mexican sunflowers as well probably two and a half meters so that's you know they've been pruned less than a month ago or probably a month ago so that's it this is the game for now especially on that top part of the system uh the bottom part of the system which is not Super pumping, yes, is this top part. I'll just show you quickly there. We're gonna go through the same process in a sense that we're gonna be managing all of the plants. But you can see, you know, if you grab that picture, how bushy things are, and then we go into this picture here, it's a different picture, so it's a different management as well. So I'm not too sure. Definitely, the pigeon peas, I'll be doing a similar process, but I don't. Yeah, I don't think I need to weaken a lot of the, the Mexican sunflowers that, you know, they are in a good kind of height there. So we'll see, but definitely the, the, the cortillaria will be, will be pruned uh, and those seeds removed and things like that. So the bigger work will be on the top part there. We have, I think, about seven, seven lines that are really, really pumping where we had veggies in between. And then the bottom one is basically remove all of the senescence, remove all of the flowers, remove all of the seeding processes, remove all of the, you know, a little bit of the dead leaves uh, from the frost event that we had, as you can see here in the banana, 
you know, we're gonna be tidying this up, cleaning that up, just pretty much just leaving green bits uh, and doing a little, little reset here. And then of course, coming in and cutting that grass, which as you can see, has grown beyond the frost level, let's say. Here you can see all of the, the frosty material, but over there, no more. So the grass is growing, everything is growing. It's really the right time to do it. And one thing that I've, you know, the more I pay attention, the more I learn the importance is finding those key times, those rhythms of the systems. Uh, it's not because it's the rainy season that we are pruning, but it's because it's the growing season. So for some, pl some places on earth, you know, the growing season might not be at the beginning of the rainy season because we also need warmth. So a lot of the temperate climates or maybe Mediterranean climates, perhaps, where where the rainy season is winter, it might not be right at the beginning. So you got to pay attention on your climate and your dynamics. When is the right time to do such a, a heavy intervention, let's say, because things need to be growing for us to come and manage. There is no point of doing heavy management if things are just not moving. So off we go. I'll keep you posted and I'll show you how things will look probably in a couple of days time. Take it easy. We stay in the clouds for a while. Morning friends, how you all doing? Well, we're doing very well here. We have finally managed our system. It's looking gorgeous. Look a little bit on the skinny side, as you can see. Uh, big effort there, but we're re re really happy with the results. We've got a, got a bit of rain coming on the weekend. So this is this is super exciting that we managed to get through it. I'll show you a little bit closer so you can have a sneak peek. So yeah, let's go from the bottom up. Um, been able to generate quite a bit of organic matter, but it just really disappears. This is probably our weakest line, but still got a fair bit. Uh, interesting to see all the different uh, plants that we put up. There is always one that shines. And yeah, so really good to see, really good to see all of the plants that we've got as well. We haven't really lost many, lost a few bananas, but not much. Um, so it's, it's good. It's good to see, but you can also see that we took about, I don't know, 90% of the leaf matter out of the plants and, and things are bouncing really back. I'll show you here how this, uh, Mexican sunflower is already coming back up, going boom, boom, boom. A little bit on the pigeon pea, of course, a little bit slower, but you start to see some of the growth kind of nodules there. The buds starting to puff up. So we went really hard. We went really hard because we wanna because we wanna really make it explode now. Really put everything into sync. Uh, all the critical areas we pretty much removed the big crown there. Boom, boom, and opened up. So just to have a little bit of of a green matter. I like to always leave a little bit of green on my plants just to just so they continue to. Put a little bit of photosynthesis um, and just indicate where I want them to be. So I left, for example, on that pigeon pea on the crown here. I removed everything on the bottom there, just to indicate where I want them to to move next. And didn't really touch any of the eucalyptus. Some of them I just left, left a little bit of the skirt if they were too too fat in the bottom, let's say. Uh, but pretty much have not touched anything. On our uh, key crops, I've just removed anything that was perhaps dead and diseased and just cleaned the bananas, for example, you know, the other leaves or the leaves that got burnt by the frost. And we really went hard with the pigeon pea as well. Removed quite a lot. Uh, see how we used to have lots of pigeon peas kind of growing together. They're still bouncing back. So I thinned them out to maybe one every, you know, 10 to 20 centimeters. Still plenty there. Uh, but I had one every one to two centimeters. And then in the center row here, what I've done, you know, come and brush cutter all of the grass as well. And I just pile them up in the middle. So I'm just starting to have this process uh, to try and just weaken that grass in the middle because that's where I want to put another row of crops. But we'll see. I wish I had more. Uh, I think some areas like here where it's a little bit thicker, it probably will do the job well. But you can see here, all the layers that was a little bit thinner, uh, that grass is already coming through and bouncing back. 
and the grass I probably brush cut that maybe less than a week ago and has already put a little bit of growth so that's why we want to see nice bouncing back from from the management within a few days we thought all of the grapes we had here were dead but at the end of the day it was just the one one of them was dead uh, they starting to put a little bit of growth there as you can see boom boom which is exciting uh, look at the little berries as well starting to put some berries on on the plant so really good news nothing really got smashed uh, over the weekend not the weekend over the winter uh, or with the really kind of six months of dry that we've had uh, pretty much all of our productive crops apart from the one we knew that got either smashed by the ants there was an apple here on this road that really got smashed but it was pretty much dead even before winter showed up and uh, and things are looking really good I also collected a lot of castor royal seeds that I'm now drying this is a leftover here so castor royal seeds and lots and lots of um, of the crotillary seeds as well that will will help me to to move things forward into into the other systems so that's it so really really heavy pruning but still leaving a fair bit even though we removed probably 70 80 percent of the cover of the grass not the grass of the green matter that we've had here we're still left with some nice green so sugar production is still happening but a lot of excitement so we'll see how how things will bounce back i'm expecting things to bounce back really well they are already coming they are already bouncing back um so now is the time to come and start make those plant is in the middle i mean the ideal scenario would be to just come and do it but i'll see if that grass in the middle do a little bit of of work for me in terms of removing um that that rhizome oh that's awesome to see a little bit of the buds coming up and it's starting to feel on that pair as well and just to show here you know so here we've had our our horticulture in all of those beds above which was you know pretty good to have a space for it but now you can see that we are a little bit behind now with that it's not exposed soil but this there is nothing much growing so this is going to be my first priority rather than going here where we've got life moving um, and things are you know working well and now i have to come here and intervene because this will start to look to to walk backwards really because we don't really have any life going even though we do have mulch and it's a little bit of the soil protected, but that's already being digested. We're going to start to have water and, and plenty of and plenty of uh, of warmth as well. They will be digested rather quick. So I want to come in and do move it forward. So that's kind of one of the trade-offs. Yes, veggies are great in the beginning, but they are, they they leave us with a big open scar as well that we have to remediate. And I wouldn't be putting any other veggies here because that's going to definitely contradict with the management. Of other things so definitely need to come and act another thing that happens as well on systems that get really dense like like mine and you know things tends to grow a little bit laggy a bit some of the the bigger plants so i'm just gonna have to come and and stake some of those up just for a for a month or so just to make sure they stay straight and um yeah things are looking good so i'll just show you here on the eucalyptus what i made by lifting the skirt used to have lots of lots of growth here and usually we only take it to that place that had had been lignified so you can see that it gets brown there and then it turns to green so this is usually where we would be stopping i just push a little bit higher uh, i still left plenty of canopy in there so it's not going to be minding too much it's awesome to see all of those mexican also that brazilian uh, fern tree as well what we call gopuruvu is one of our classics it's so gorgeous uh, it's got a little bit of a sticky point over there so there's plenty of those that's the future of kind of organic matter and a little bit of timber production so this is really exciting some of the kind of native papayas as well coming through and look at this eucalyptus as i was showing uh really leggy we're gonna have to 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 stake that one up i'm really happy with the the growth of the the acacia mansion people are telling me it was just going to be too cold here but they are really powering through they're really going well 
so that's really exciting to see it uh where is the the african mahogany which people said would be a better one it's not really doing too well oh the beautiful red cedar there's quite a few doing really really well look at here another eucalyptus that just needs to be staked up so that's the next job it's always important to come back and have a look at the management especially when you had a little bit of wind a little bit of rain to see how those plants are are holding up or not and coming and just doing one final little management just to make sure things are moving in the right direction so that's it that's the big management for the spring or let's say the beginning of the rainy season because different places would have different growing seasons so let's not talk about spring or or rainy season let's talk about the growing season that's the the important time so very exciting things are things are absolutely pumping and i'm yeah really looking forward to this to this growing season i think it's just going to take things to to the next level really everything looks really really happy apart from those into rows which i'm going to be doing a bit of work in the next few weeks still got a bit of a crop coming here kind of the final bed that we've planted up tomatoes are looking a bit not so good a bit skinny and so we have a fair bit of beans but we had a few days of a lot of moisture so they are kind of our went a little bit on the moldy side of life so i don't know this was really dense this was really 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 dense as well so i think it just did not help when we had a lot of moisture and a lot of density so that's what i'm saying and we're managing the system for veggies or managing the system for trees um they it's not fitting anymore so but anyway that's going to stay here for a little bit we'll harvest a few little beans and maybe a corn or two uh, a few beetroots so I'll probably stay here for another month um and that's it and we, we move things on brassicas are definitely not looking great uh, look at the size of this cauliflower really really struggling so yeah probably not the best decision to have put this bed in here I just try to push the boundaries a bit and you know it's part of the learning it's part of the learning it doesn't matter how much we practice we are learning on an absolutely daily basis so make sure you are enjoying the journey because that's what matters take care have a beautiful day